All right, so today we're going to talk about distance between points in three-dimensional space. Let's say we got two points P1, X1, Y1, Z1, and point P2, X2, Y2, Z2. Let's say we want to find the straight line distance between those two points. Let's look at that blue line right there. That would be um, representing the distance between those two points. Let's say P1 is, you know, coordinate X1, Y1, Z1. Point P2 is coordinates X2, Y2, and Z2. The distance between those two points, that would be this notation right here. The straight lines on, on the side of something usually represent some kind of magnitude or distance. Well, if we have two points here, P1 and P2, the distance between them is given by the square root of x1 minus x2 quantity squared plus y1 minus y2 quantity squared plus z1 minus z2 quantity squared. This is very similar to what you probably saw with two dimensions. The question that I get frequently is, does it matter which point is p1 and p2? If I What if I had, had p2 over here and p1 down here? Does it matter if I do x2 minus x1 squared or y2 minus y1 squared or z2 minus z1 squared? It absolutely does not matter because whenever we have a negative sign, that's what we would get if we swap these two x2 minus x1 would be the negative of x1 minus x2. I mean, think about it. 3 minus 2 versus 2 minus 3. They're just off by a negative sign. That's going to go away because we square this term. So whenever we square that negative 1, it's going to go away. So we're going to get the same distance regardless of which point we pick for p1 and p2. So absolutely, it does not matter. So let's look at an example, see what we can do with this formula. So we look at this first example here. What is the distance between the points negative 1, 1, 0 and 2, 3, 1? Like I just said, it doesn't matter which point we let P be P1 and which point we let be P2. So what we're going to do is we just let the first one be P1, x1, y1, z1. The second point will say x2, y2, z2. Then the distance, d, we'll call it is the square root of negative 1 minus 2 quantity squared plus 1 minus 3 squared plus 0 minus negative 1 squared. That equals See, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Let me square that. And then 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Square that. And then the last one, 0 minus negative 1 is 1, so we square 1. So this is going to be the square root of 9 plus 4 plus 1, which is the square root of 14. And we don't have any kind of units to think about in this example. Um, in some real-world application, you would want to know what these units are, how are these points measured as far as their locations, are they meters, are they inches, are they feet, are they centimeters. Um, we're not going to worry about that at this point. So that finishes our first example. So now we'll, we'll go into this, this idea of what about all points that are the same distance away from a single point. So in two dimensions, the set of all points x, y in the plane that are the same distance r from a center point hk is a circle. So we see that over here. We see, okay, we got this center point, we'll call it hk, x value h, y value k. The points that are all the same distance away from that, we'll call it r, that r distance away, that creates a circle. If you can um, pretend that this is a nice perfect circle drawing that I got here. If we use the 2D analog of our distance formula, that r value that's constant for all of these points is equal to the square root of x1, which is, we'll just call it x, minus the other point, which is the center point, h. So x and y are all the other points that are the same distance r away from h comma k. So we're just using the distance formula here to get this equation. If we square both sides, we get r squared equals x minus h squared plus y minus k squared. So then the question is, what is the same idea in three dimensions? If I have a, a center point 
and I want to think about all the points that are the same distance away from that center point, well now I just have to go to this 2D picture and I say, okay, what if, what if there's an axis coming at me from this point? Let's say coming out of the screen. Well, then I have some points that are close to me, or at least closer to me than the screen is, that are R away, and I have some points further away that are R away. So that becomes a sphere in three dimensions. The same idea exactly translates into a sphere. If we look at the sphere equation in three dimensions, we'll see that it's very similar to what we have here for a circle. So here we have uh, the same idea for a sphere. If the center is HKL and R is the fixed distance, then R is equal to, and I'm just using this, this distance formula again, R is equal to the square root of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus l squared, or if I square both sides, I get r squared equals x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus l squared. So the general equation of a sphere here is r squared equals x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus l squared. We'd say the center here is h, k, l, and the radius is r. A lot of people um, we'll forget to take the square root of this number. So if you see like a, a 27 or a 25 or a 49 or a 50 or something over here on this side, that's by itself. Don't think that you just say 50 is the radius. No, it's the square root of 50 or the square root of 25, which in that case it would just be 5 or 49 would just be 7. So you always have to take the square root when you see these perfect squares on the right-hand side. And that's an important thing to note is that on the right-hand side we have perfect squares. So that's going to come into play when we look at our example here with the sphere. All right, so in this example it says show that the equation x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 6x plus 4y minus 2z equals 11 represents the equation of a sphere and find its center point and the radius. So we got to look at this and we say, hmm, if we compare this to our sphere equation, these don't have perfect squares. x squared and 6x, y squared and 4y, z squared and negative 2z. That's, that's not a perfect square. The perfect squares are x minus something squared. Here I have uh, x to the first power. That's not part of my perfect square. So what, we, what are we going to have to do? We are going to have to complete the square here. We're going to have to say, hmm, complete the squares for x, y, and z. So we got to complete the squares for x, y, and z. So we're going to, how do we do that? We write all the x terms together. So we got x squared minus 6x plus, I'm going to leave a little space there and say plus y squared plus 4y, leave a little space, plus, then plus z squared, sorry, minus 2z, leave a little space, put a plus, equals 11. So now we say, how do I complete that square? I look at the middle term here. I say, hmm, x to the first power has a coefficient of negative 6. So what I do is I divide that negative 6 by 2, and we get negative 3. And now we're going to square negative 3 and add it right here. So plus negative 3 squared. Same thing here for the y terms. I say 4 divided by 2 equals 2. Square that, so plus 2 squared. And then same thing here. Negative 2 divided by 2 equals negative 1 plus negative 1 squared. That's going to equal 11. Well, what I have to, what I do to one side, I have to do to both sides. So I have to add negative 3 squared on the right. I have to add 2 squared. And I have to add negative 1 squared. Now I just need to simplify. This whole process of taking this middle term, x to the first power, its coefficient dividing by 2, is so that when we factor, we factor this now as x minus 3 quantity squared. So let's look at that. x minus 3 quantity squared. When I FOIL that back out, I get x squared minus 3x times 2, because I double it because it's a perfect square. So negative 6x and then square negative 3, I get 9. So that's exactly the idea that we wanted. 
to obtain. So we divide this term in the middle by 2 because when we FOIL it, we actually multiply it by 2. So now we have y plus 2 squared plus z minus 1 squared equals 11 plus 9 plus 4 plus 1. Now that right hand side, 11 plus 9, that's 20 plus 5, so that's 25. So I have my equation x minus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared plus z minus 1 squared equals 25. Now this is where I'm talking about that right hand side, that 25 is not the radius, the radius, the radius r is 5. Take the square root square root of 25 to get that radius. And then the center point is the point 3, negative 2, positive 1. Negative because our equation was x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus l squared. So here we have a plus sign and we need a minus sign. So actually we can get that if we say, oh, that middle term is actually k equals negative 2. And that wraps up our example for a sphere. So that's the center point.